In this tutorial, you will learn how to use V-Ray Next for Grasshopper and how to animate facade movement. You will learn the basic principles behind timeline component for V-Ray in Grasshopper and how it influences geometry and its parameters. Now let's get started. One quick announcement, we currently have a couple of spots available for our Rhino for Architects 2.0 course. If you're interested in a structured step-by-step -step learning approach with personal one-on-one -on -one support and homework exercises, feel free to send your application and schedule your call with me. The link is in the description. The course covers various topics like parametric modeling with Grasshopper, fluid form modeling, architectural animation, visualization, presentation techniques, and much, much more. All right, so we're going to start with the project we did a while back. You can check that tutorial here uh, if you want to, to know how this definition is made. It consists of uh, three, three lines, like this is one line, this is the second line and the third line that are actually lofted and then uh, they are divided to create this kind of like uh, like separate panels of wooden panels and uh, we're going to use this definition as an example of how to uh, create our animation with V-Ray. So the first thing that we need to know about this file is that there is an infinite plane that uh, you can uh, add an infinite plane from here from V-Ray and we have this geometry uh, that we created with this definition that's all we need. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to show you the components that you're going to be using. So first off, when you go here to render, you want to use a V-Ray camera. Then you want to use a V-Ray render. This is the main one and also V-Ray timeline. These are some of the most important components that you want to use. And now we're going to go through each one of those. So for example, uh, V-Ray camera, uh, this is going to uh, give us an angle uh, that uh, is going to show uh, our render. So for example here if I rotate here in my viewport you can see that this is the position that uh, that this component remembered when we were here. So this means that for example if I create a new uh, if I create a new position so for example something like this and let's say that I want this to be my camera angle so I'm going to now save this view I'm going to call it camera one and now if I go back to Grasshopper and if I right click and I say get from active Rhino viewport, that will automatically create the viewport here. So you can see that my camera just changed and now this is going to be the camera from which uh, my rendering is going to happen. So uh, that's, that's how you control the camera and the angle of the, of the rendering. Uh, now the next thing that you want to, to pay attention to is uh, the light source. So we need to have some sort of a light source inside the scene. So V-Ray that you see here in Rhino is different than V-Ray in Grasshopper. So they work, they can work together, but you, you can watch, uh, look at them as a separate, uh, separate V-Rays. So in this case, we need the light source. So I'm gonna go to lighting and I'm going to take uh, V-Ray light rig dome. And this is a typical uh, component that you would use as uh, as a, a HDRI image. So now we want to have some some additional options here. So I'm gonna use Boolean toggle. Uh, we want this light to be turned on. We also want it to be visible. And when it comes to texture, this is where you you would uh, load your HDRI image. So we want to uh, to type here file path that will give us the option to uh, choose our HDRI image. So I'm gonna right click. Uh, set one existing file and now I'm gonna set my and I'm gonna choose my HDRI image. Once I picked my HDRI, you can see that now this component is not uh, orange anymore and then we can uh, change uh, other sliders. So for example, I can put the intensity here to be let's say 1.5. Rotation, uh, you can probably rotate from you know uh, so 360 so let's type that number and you can uh, do the rotation here of the HDRI. And the background intensity, we can also put this to either, if you want this to be visible or no, we would put it to zero, if you want the background to be black. So now we have the light rig and we have the camera. Uh, the next thing that we, would, that we need in order for this to work, we need uh, to, to have some inputs here. So one thing that you can do here, uh, instead of just right clicking and then putting the parameters, you can right click on the engine and then uh, put here extract parameter and we can do this for each single one so that uh, you have the option to change it uh, in a more you know easy way so you can just uh, click here and change whatever you want 
when it comes to the output image we can do the same for the output image this is the file and uh, this is of course the, the the file path where you want to save your your rendering so we're gonna double click and we're gonna choose the path where we want to save this and once I have that saved uh, we have output resolution so in this case if you want to change the resolution you can change here uh, uh, set multiple integers so let me show you this like this so right click set multiple integers and here I can change the resolution so uh, I can change for example let's change this from 1000 to let's say 600 and if I click commit changes that will be my new resolution of the image and now uh, when it comes to the camera if you remember we, we did a camera here so I'm going to just connect it to the camera and light rig uh, this is the light rig so uh, if you if you notice here we have all of these three are rigs and all of these three are uh, light sources so rigs of course go on the top and lights go on the bottom in this case we have a rig so we're going to use a uh, light rig here and uh, also one uh, important thing here is that you need to put the geometry that you want we right to recognize so in this case we have two geometries we have uh, the infinite plane which is currently selected and we have this geometry uh, that we created with our definition so so in this case let's uh, let's add those geometries so uh, we need to go here and click on v-ray geometry and I'm gonna copy this guy two times so one is going to be my infinite plane and the way that this works I would simply create a geometry component here and I would click on my infinite plane right click set one geometry and now I have it as my uh, geometry here. Uh, when it comes to the uh, to my definition to my to my project, uh, that's this is the output. So I'm going to simply also create the geometry output here and connect it with this guy. And that's going to be my uh, that's going to be my geometry for uh, for the definition. Now when it comes to materials. Uh, you can set your materials from here so you can either create your your materials from scratch or you can take the existing materials in this case we're going to take some V-Ray materials from this project that already exists so uh, of course before in my V-Ray for Rhino I already have some of those materials created so that's that's how I have this selection so I can select those materials so I'm going to I'm going to uh, copy this guy two times and one of those materials is going to be for my ground and one of those is going to be for my uh, Definition here for my uh, facade. So first one is the uh, The geometry for the the plane uh, for the ground. So I'm going to uh, Pick uh, for example this grid ground that I created before and I'm just going to select it and move it here And the second one is going to be a white material. So I'm simply going to choose the white material here and now we can uh, put all of these guys into the V-Ray uh, geometry input. So I'm gonna put one input here, hold shift, one, put second input here. And now we can test this. We can see if this will work. So in this case, let's try with interactive. So we have interactive progressive, let's put a, the quality uh, to very high. So if you want to test to see how this would look like, you would simply right click, click on render, and this would open up our uh, our uh, V-Ray frame buffer and you can see the things that we created. For example, if you want to test the, the uh, some other materials, we can, for example, go back here and we can change this white material to red. Now you can see how uh, in real time our material will change. The same thing would apply with the, with the ground material. So for example, if you go to, to white, you can see how the background will become white and this will become red. Uh, that's that's how you would test for example anything that you want and also you can experiment with uh, with uh, the rotation of the Sun uh, of the HDR image and also the intensity for example if I change this to let's say 3 this will become much brighter so you can see the result that I'm gonna get I'm gonna put this back to the white and let's say that I'm happy with with 1.5 or 2 I think that's uh, that's that's enough okay so that's how you would render out a single image of course you can use uh, you, you don't need to use interactive you can use uh, production uh, and you can have the the bucket sampler uh, later on for the final output and now let's see how uh, how all of this integrates with V-Ray animation 
So in order to have a V-Ray animation, we need to have this timeline component that uh, we, we found here, V-Ray timeline. And that timeline component needs to be connected with the timeline input here. Uh, so now let me just briefly describe what this means. For example, if we have frames of, let's say, 100 frames here, and uh, this will give us, for example, if you put the panel here, this will give us uh, the current frame and this will give us the current uh, fraction of the frame. So this means that uh, if I change my frame here, so let's say if I put the frame to let's say 30, uh, this will uh, tell me, the current frame will tell me the number and the current fraction will give me uh, will give me the decimal. This is, uh, this is going to give me all the numbers from 0 to 1 and this is going to give me the numbers from, from the, the actual frame itself. So if I change the frame, you can see how these numbers are changing, changing here. So based on these two numbers, uh, and of course the frame count, that's how we can uh, play around with the animation of, of a certain object. So in our case, uh, if you want to animate a certain movement of this facade, all we need to do is use these outputs and this frame count input uh, so that it controls uh, what happens in each frame. So for example in this frame the geometry is on this number and then in this frame the geometry is on this on this number. So uh, you can you can you can look at this as a simple slider but this slider uh, is actually controlling the animation sequence. So what does this mean uh, in terms of uh, the, this example? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it uh, let's say on the other side here. Uh, and this is the element here that we're going to change. So, for example, if I take a look at this, at this uh, uh, geometry now, and uh, if I, uh, let me just uh, hide this for a second. Okay, so, so it have a better uh, visibility here. So, uh, in terms of animation, if you want to change, for example, this number here, if I change this from, from this number to some other number, you can see how this flow of the of the bottom line will change. So in this particular case, we're only changing this uh, this first line. We're changing how it behaves, and uh, it, for this particular example, we're going to animate that movement. So wh wherever you can put some kind of value, which is from zero to one, that's where you, could, you would use current fra uh, fraction frame. So in this case, this is. Uh, what we would be using. So we would be using this output with this input here and that would give us a different, as you can see, different results on the bottom. Uh, the, the key thing here is that we also need to connect the frames count with the amount of, of points that we have here. So this is, for example, the, the amount of points. If I change this to 30, you can see how uh, this, will, uh, this will change. The amount of points will change. So I'm going to bring it back to 48. That's how much it was. And uh, we want for each frame to have one, uh, one uh, uh, change. And that's why this input needs to be the same as the frame amount. So in this case, if I, if I bring this to the frame count, now the frame count is the same as, uh, as the amount of points. This means that I will not have frames that are repetitive. I will only have frames which are changing. So in one second of animation, we have 30 frames and each each frame will be different. So in this particular case, all we need to do is connect that, that guy and then we also need to con connect a current fraction uh, with uh, this input here. And now, uh, if you can see, if I change, for example, this number, it will change here the geometry as well. And that's how this all works. And now we're actually ready to, to play around with the, with, the, with the rendering. The last thing that we need to do is uh, connect timeline here with the timeline here. And now we told uh, V-Ray for Grasshopper, okay, now you have a timeline sequence. You need to export that timeline sequence here. And we just need to change a couple of things here. So we need to change the mode from interactive to production. We want to change the sampler to bucket. We want to change, of course, the quality is based on, on you, but uh, it depends on your hardware. For example, this is going to be rendering uh, 48 uh, frames, so 48 images. So based on how, uh, how fast you want to go, uh, you can put this to very high or high. In this case, we're going to keep it like this. And I'm going to do, before I do that, I also like to do the test rendering. So first, I'm going to 
double click here this will give me this kind of like, like a zipper so i'm going to disconnect it for a second and i'm going to right click click render and this will just give me an idea of of uh, how this will all look like so i want to make sure that i have very good uh you know very good quality and if i'm happy with the angle if i'm happy with the lighting i will keep uh, keep it on and it seems as uh this is all uh working great so we have the resolution as you can see 1000 by 600 and uh, I'm happy with the results so now I'm going to stop it and I'm going to uh, reconnect back the timeline here and now the last thing that I have is right click I have render animation option so in this case I have uh, the render animation when I click there it will it will become like whitish type of, of uh, like color here in the grasshopper window and this means that our rendering is our animation is rendering at the moment and uh, once this is done I'm going to stop it now once this is done you will have a folder like this that has all of these images uh, and of course it's up to you now to uh, combine all of them into a single animation now if you're interested in watching an extended version of this tutorial where we are going a step further in learning how to animate via camera movement as well as how to compile our animation in after effects you can watch it on our patreon page and support our work at the same time with that you will also get access to all of our extended tutorials and project files i'd like to thank all of our patrons thank you guys for your support and your tutorial suggestions until the next time, take care, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on the bell icon so you don't miss any future tutorials.